Hey, Bobby. So, uh, I promised you a little video here of um, my kind of mathematical thinking about the Electoral College. And I realized after I, I told you I'd make you the video, I, I hadn't looked at, like, why we even have the Electoral College in the first place. So, let's just start with that. Um, why was the Electoral College created? And let's just see why the Electoral College history is central. Uh, Electoral College was created for two reasons. The first purpose was to create a buffer between the population and the selection of a president, okay, which, they, well, kind of. Uh, the second, as part of the structure of the government that gave extra power to the smaller states. Okay, that, that, that's the one that I keep hearing a lot about, the second part there. The, 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 the little states get a voice, you know, they, they, get some, they get some extra voicings. So that's the one that I was kind of focusing on. Um, so here's the way I've been looking at it. Um, I took each state, Alabama, Alaska, all the way down to Wyoming. And I think I put Washington, D.C. in here, too, because it counts, right? It counts as a state for purposes of votes. Um, and then I put the number of electoral votes that state gets in the next column. And the way I did some research into that when I was looking for this, and apparently the, they, get the, they get their electoral votes based on A, the number of senators the state has and b the number of representatives they have and the number of representatives they have is a function of their population and everybody everybody gets two senators the idea being the senate is balanced it's 50 people or excuse me it's 100 senators um two i guess 102 if you count dc so 102 senators two from each state and the district of columbia uh, i'm gonna do a quick check here to make sure i got this math right uh some of all of these, I think this should be 538, but let, yeah, 538, that's the magic number. Um, and then if you take half of that, if you divide, if you divide, whoops, 538 in half, you get the, uh, whoops, I put the equal sign in the wrong place, my bad. You get the 269, which is why 270 is so important. So 270 electoral votes kicks you over into majority, and that means you got elected president. Okay, so what I did here, uh, first thing was, I took um, each electoral vote, well, the total number of electoral votes, and divided it into the population of the state. So this column right here is equal to the population divided by the number of electoral votes. So what this means is this number is how many people each electoral vote represents. So in Alabama, each electoral vote is 540,000 people, but in Alaska, it's almost half of that. I mean, almost exactly half of that, right? 247,000 people. And in Arizona, it's 630. And what you start noticing is these numbers are not very uh, uniform. As a matter of fact, if I average them, let's take an average. I probably shouldn't even do this because they're probably skewed. They got an average of 500,000. And what I'm going to do real quick is do a really fun measure called a standard deviation. Standard deviation is plus or minus 150,000 votes. So what this tells us is there's a whole lot of deviation around these numbers. For example, Wyoming, there are fewer than 200,000 people per electoral vote, which means that Wyoming, compared to a very populous state like California, Wyoming's electoral vote is like four times as powerful. Another way to look at this, we can look at it a different way too if you want, we can do exactly the opposite. We can do electoral votes over people. We can do it, I'm sorry, I probably should have done this one too. So let's just do it a different way. Let's divide the 9 by this one and then drag that down. These numbers will be very, very small for the most part. Let's change them to percentages so you can kind of see what they look like. There we go. Let's change them to percentages and then get some more rounding there. Eh, you know what, this is dumb. They're so small. It's too, it's too impossible to deal with the small numbers. Let's just stick with these numbers. But the point is, is that these numbers are wildly variant. Now, looking at the history, um, I was looking at some of it. It wasn't just this site. It was some other ones, too. Uh, um, the idea was, oh, man, I wish I had paid close attention to these links. They talk about tumult and disorder. Uh, electors would be able to ensure only a qualified person becomes president and so forth and so on. So what I keep hearing over and over again is small states becoming empowered and um, we don't get somebody in office who isn't fit for office. Now, the, the thing that mathematically gets me is small states 
need to not get lost with the big states. Okay, but here's the problem. An electoral vote in Wyoming is literally worth three and a half to four times what an electoral vote in California is worth. And I've heard lots of people say, well, that's the way it should be. And I'm like, actually, that, that kind of isn't specified anywhere. Nobody specified in the Constitution the small states versus the large states, number one. Number two, the Electoral College, as we know it, was formed, I think, over 200 years ago, right after the Declaration of Independence. Most of these states weren't states then, which means the states that, that primarily are the ones that are bitching about underrepresentation because of population weren't even states when the college was created okay so with those things in mind i've been thinking about it a lot and how to fix it and here's one thing i came up with and of course this would require you know the the, the government and the states themselves to actually vote on but what i decided one thing you could do since you know, these numbers are roughly based on population. I kept seeing they're based on the census, they're based on the census. Well, actually, based on the census means population, not the Senate. The Senate is the opposite of population. It's the idea of making the, the senators exactly equal in each state. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of the senators out, minus two, and then drag that down. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is instead of giving Alabama 9, I'm going to give Alabama 7. Instead of giving California 55, I'm going to give them 53 and so forth and so on. And then we're going to look at these numbers. So we're going to do the same exact math I did on the previous page, but we're going to use the, the reduced number of electoral votes. Now what happens then, if you do the average, you notice that the average number of people per electoral vote goes up, as it should. It should go up. It, it's a, it, um, we, we, we are removing some of the original electoral votes, which means we're cutting the population into fewer pieces, which means the pieces have to be bigger. But the thing that makes me kind of happier about it is this. There's half the variation. Look at that number there, 80,000. That is half the variation of this one, okay? I mean, roughly, it's not, not perfect, but it's roughly half, which means these numbers here, Wyoming still gets its boost, right? It still gets its boost over California, right? Where's California? Here's California. It's at 740,000, and Wyoming still gets its boost. It's just that its boost is a little more proportional in light of the populations of, or excuse me, back that up. Its boost is not as extreme as it is in the case. Because the problem is, when people use the argument the smaller states are underrepresented in the popular vote, well, you, you shouldn't be allowed to use the senators then. Because the Senate has nothing to do with your population. The Senate has zero to do with your population. Nothing at all. So pull the Senate out. Now, we can't get rid of the, the, the EC. It's not going anywhere. But what we could do is restructure it. And one of my ideas to restructure it, it's never going to happen in my lifetime or yours, is to get rid of the senators' votes in the Electoral College. That's one thing you could do, right? That's totally one thing you could do. Another thing you could do, and again, this would require an act of God, most likely, because government is never going to change what works for them, is... If you want to keep the original electoral college the way it is, with these, you know, with the 538 votes that we talked about, another way you could do it, and this is my opinion, is base the actual, allow for partial ones. Okay, let me, let me use the other sheet. This might make it easier. So I'm going to leave the senators out because the senators screw everything up anyway. Here's the population of the state. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to sum up these two things. We're going to equal the sum, because if I take out those 102, this should be, if my math is correct, 436. Yep, 436. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to equal the sum. I'm going to add up the entire population of all the states together. All right, here we go. Boom, boom. Where are you? There we go, right there. So according to this, this census, and I'm not sure what year this was actually done, um, 323 million people in the U.S. That's pretty close, right? Let me just check the population of the U.S. right now. U.S. population. Yeah, 327.2. We're, we're, we're pretty close to the most recent. I've got my spreadsheet updated pretty well. I'm going to remove this column for a second. Because what I'm going to do now is, rather than give them this number of electoral votes, which is should be based on the populations of the states. What I'm going to do is I'm going to allocate 
allocate EV based on population. Now, of course, this is going to make the this is going to make people that are are electoral college purists scream because I've removed the senators. But you're going to see why in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to form a proportion of the Alabama population over the total population of the United States. That's the fraction. I'm going to hit enter here and then go back. That's the fraction of the United States Alabama makes up. Okay. Actually, let's make this. Let's let's make two columns. Let's call this uh, percent of U.S. that state makes up. That's terrible English, but I think it gets the point across. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take each state's population and divide it by the total population of the U.S. and we're going to fill that down. And what you see is these are the percentages that each state makes up. So California essentially is one eighth of the entire country in population, which of course is where people complain about direct election. Florida is about half of that. Okay, and then you can see what are some other populous states. New York's got to be one of them, right? New York. Well, New York isn't that big. Yeah, so New York is 6% as well, but it's actually a small geographical area. So here, uh, Texas is a big one. Okay, so 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 California, it's funny, you know, I just, now that I say that out loud, people always bitch about California and New York controlling the popular vote, but Texas would actually control more than New York would based on population. I mean, assuming that everybody in Texas voted uh, uh, conservative like it usually does. Now, anyway, sidetracked. Let me sum up all these percentages to make sure they add to 100. They should because, you know, just because of the way we did the math. Okay, let's do uh, right there. All right, 100%, beautiful. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a column over here. Okay. Oh, I spelled percent wrong too. <laughs> Good thing it'll teach English. Uh, and I'm going to put that here. And instead of percent, I'm going to say allocate electoral votes by that percent. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take that percent and multiply it by that 436. Remember that 436? That was that magical number down here. Uh, that was the senatorial, uh, with, with senators removed uh, 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 electoral vote. And I'm going to drag that puppy dog down. So this, these are the numbers that the states should have, should have exactly if they followed percentages of population. And if you notice, they're pretty darn close to what they should be, 4.234, 14, 13.9. As a matter of fact, if you round them off, they're almost exact. Okay, And that's the way they should be. Probably the furthest one away is a state like Wyoming, because Wyoming has a little weird, unfair advantage just by virtue of how it sits. The problem is, if you do the same thing, okay, and if you, I'm going to put allocate, uh, I'm going to call this the minus senator EV by percent, okay? If you do the same thing, I'm going to copy this over here. I want to allocate now the actual EVs by percent. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the percent but apply it to 538, which is the actual number of electoral votes that are granted. Okay, now this is going to get interesting. So we're going to have to, I think, I think we're going to want to look at actual EVs again. So let me, let me copy them over here so we can see them easier. Uh, yeah, there we go. Let's copy these puppy dogs down. And you begin to notice that some of these don't agree very well at all. While the minus senator electoral votes agree, agreed almost perfectly, the actual EVs kind of disagree from the, the, the populations when you look at the how many people are actually in the state. For example, Alabama gets 9. It should get 8 by percent. Uh, who's this here? You know what? Let's get the state name, too. State name. Let's do that here. Let me pull that over. I'm having, I should have set the spreadsheet up better. I apologize. Okay, so Alabama. So let's look at the ones that are close, and let's look at the ones that are far, so to speak. Okay, so Alabama gets one extra. Alaska gets almost two extra. Arizona is roughly getting what it should get. Arkansas gets one extra. California, look at this. California actually gets 10 few, 10 fewer than it should by population. Colorado gets almost what it should. Connecticut gets an extra one. Delaware gets an extra one. So what you're starting to note, Florida gets fewer than it should. So what you're seeing is you're seeing not 
a boost in the lower, let's take a look at Wyoming, because Wyoming's always the one that makes my head scratch. Yeah, Wyoming gets over two than it's supposed that it than it should. Texas also gets screwed out of some electoral votes here. So what you're seeing is you're seeing people in these smaller states, yeah, they're getting boosted, but they're not getting boosted in a way that is equitable. Okay? As soon as you include the Senate. You are no longer talk. You, you no longer can use the argument smaller states. If you're going to use the population argument, you have to throw away the Senate because the Senate is not based on population. But the Senate is tied to the Electoral College. So here's a poten another potential solution besides just throwing the Senate out. Allow number one. Well, that is number one. Number two, partial electoral votes. In other words, remember my little numbers back here. Uh, allocate minus senator EVs. Let them have these. Give them 6.56 electoral votes. Don't give them don't give them nine. Don't give them eight. Don't give them seven. Give them 6.56. I mean, we have computers. We can do math now. That's one idea. The other idea is stop limiting it to the number 538. I mean, throw away the number 538 and actually allocate them based on population. That will never fly because that will that totally removes the idea of the electoral college. So, of everything I've talked to you about in this, sorry, this is going on almost 20 minutes now, and I apologize. I wanted to make this quicker, but of everything we've talked about, I think the big idea here is you got to get the Senate out of the electoral college. If you get the senators out all of a sudden the whole the whole pattern looks different and it looks more fair it looks more fair even if you use the actual electoral votes if you base them on population even leaving the senators in the senators then take their their seat if you will and they and they take a step back uh, so if that's my guess my big theme for the whole discussion is if you're going to talk about small states then you got to pull the senators out to talk about the small states all right, man, I'm sorry this went on so long. I did want to have it quicker than that, but uh, hopefully it made sense. And um, anyway, just things I think about. Hope you're doing well, my friend, and we'll talk to you soon.